So I had no idea where I was, had no idea how to go anywhere. I had tried to run away several times and I just never found a way. Human trafficking in the heartland. Women and men sold for sex and used as servants, though the victims don't all come from a world away. Some may have grown up right next door. Hi everyone, I'm Andy Choi. And I'm Maria Guerrero. The idea crimes like these are happening in Wisconsin may be startling to many people because they simply don't make the news. Tonight, David Douglas teams up with the Wisconsin Center for Investigative Journalism to explain why not, David. Well, as several dozen women, Maria, were being held against their will, trafficked and sold each year in Madison, you think you'd hear about it, don't you? Yet, you don't. There are several reasons why, in part because as awful as it sounds, it's a world of organized crime that is rarely understood. The sex. I was sold there for drugs. The beatings. He beat me so badly. Like, I was bloody to the core. The control. I didn't have a choice in the matter, no matter what. This is Laura, held against her will by invisible chains, psychologically padlocked to a man named Michael. She thought cared for her. He scared the crap out of me. I didn't think that there were other girls like me. I really thought myself very dumb. Growing up in Middleton, at 19, her life took an abrupt turn on a trip to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Once there, she entered a world of sexual slavery. I got to leave Michael's presence because he got drugs from this other person, and I had to go with that person. Her story falls under an often confusing umbrella, known legally as human trafficking. When people think of trafficking, they think that people are taken across national boundaries. They think of international trafficking. But in fact, you know, we have domestic trafficking in our community. It doesn't mean that they have to be taken across boundaries. They can be taken across the block. Jan Miyazaki runs Project Respect, a Madison agency to help trafficking victims. She says Laura's story is credible and frequent. I think that as extreme as it is, you're right that, you know, her case is not that uncommon. Yet in the Badger State, where human trafficking became a felony in 2008, the Wisconsin Center for Investigative Journalism found there's only been one prosecution under the statute. Jermaine Rogers was found guilty in January for locking a woman in a room and telling her she would work for him as a prostitute. I think as a community, you know, we have to build some kind of consensus of this crime, the way we did about um, domestic violence. In 2007, a state survey of law enforcement agencies, prosecutors, and service providers identified as many as 200 trafficking victims. Obviously, the majority of these, uh, all these cases were unidentified probably not prosecuted, if prosecuted, maybe for something else. Karina Silver, who worked on the project, says not much has changed, in part because in order to get the 2008 law passed, its sponsors took the money it would have provided for training and data collection out of the bill. And she says that's a problem. They will continue not know about them. They will continue not recognize the victims, not prosecute the perpetrators, and this kind of thing just continues. This is, this is a very hidden crime. Wisconsin has seen a handful of federal cases, including the conviction of Jefferson and Elnora Kalimlim, Milwaukee doctors sent to prison for hiding a Filipino maid in their home for 19 years. The case only brought to light when the ex-wife of one of the Kalimlim children turned the couple in. Even reporting someone giving you bad wages is hard to report, let alone holding you against your will beating you, making you do crazy things. Laura didn't report the crimes against her because she never wanted to see Michael again. Miyazaki says people who come from such bad situations often fear they'll be the ones in trouble. They may even blame themselves. They may, you know, feel on some level they've perpetrated crimes. They are, um, you know, afraid to ask for help. For Laura, getting away was enough. I just ran. Ran. I didn't care which way I was going. I said to myself, you know, you just run and you will get home. Run. And I didn't. We hid Laura's identity because she didn't want Michael to ever be able to find her again. 
Many trafficking cases may be prosecuted as prostitution cases, and that's just one example where advocates say training, especially for law enforcement, is so badly needed. And really, even in small communities that may be the last place you think this could happen, yet ideal places for these kinds of crimes because they're so hidden. The United States Department of State's latest trafficking in persons report, they do it every year, they've done it for 10 years now, mm -hmm. feels that they... 15,000 people are trafficked into this country every year, but that doesn't count people that are already in the country that are being moved around or moved within communities. And like you said, David, this could be happening to your neighbor right now. And these advocates say they see that around our own community. And this crime looks like our community because it's happening here. All right. Thanks so much. Powerful story. Thank you, David. And to learn more about human trafficking in Wisconsin, go to channel3000.com to read the entire report.